You can tell, built in 1887, that's the historical Eiffel Tower here in Paris. Now, the one thing about history and when things were built also talks about rugby. And when those journeys began, they've got the advantage, the French, having appeared in nine World Cups, South Africa only seven, because South Africa only started playing in 1995. But all of that aside, this is the biggest moment where the host nation gets to play against the defending champion South Africa. Time running out, and obviously with this iconic backdrop, here's another icon who's played for the Springboks. That's uh, Tando Banana. Tando, I know there might be a little bit of a nip here, a little chilly today. Takes nothing away from the fact that the expectations are very high. Let's dive straight into the team news. From a South African perspective, 13 of the 15 that would have played against the French before get to start, or even the ones that played against Ireland get to start. Yeah, Rob, I think what's important for me is where we're playing. Yeah. We're playing at the Parc de France. South Africa, in their last three outings, have beaten the French yeah. in their own background. That gives me a bit of comfort. Uh, we look out, we, we played in Marseille, we yeah. obviously defeated there, but obviously things didn't go our way. We had a a red, a red card, we, we missed penalty kicks that cost us the game at the end. But if we talk of this coming night at nine o'clock kickoff time, you have to start from a clean page. If you look what Rassi Jack Nidab has done, they've looked and they've delayed announcing the team for one mere reason only, was to find out what type of a game plan they would love to play against a French side. Who are the hosts, who are playing at home, and who firmly believe that the World Cup belongs to them sure. this year around. So that's the only thing that for me just could boggle South African mind is knowing that they want to win it for the French. But for me also, the team announcement with the, with the, with the, with the combination of your halfback, that for me was a deja vu moment. I never thought Cobas would start. I always said Faf would start the game. So it tells you that they work on a different on a different uh, combination just going forward. Just give me that thinking though, because Kubas Reynolds has shown game in and game out when given an opportunity ahead of Faf that he can deliver. So from your side, what is it that you think he's done right? And what is the thinking from the technical team? Look, I think one thing about Kobas is he's a, a leading try scorer when it yeah. comes to, to the South African. He scored four tries. But also, if you look at the, the execution, he's quick off the mark. He's able to link up with the 10. He's able to link up with the wing. He's got, he's got good speed in him. Yeah. So I think speed is also a factor. Not that Faf doesn't have, but also he's not a kicking fly half. So what it tells you is we want more ball in hand, creating those spaces and going for the weak shoulder. But also he's able to go for Jaliba. So Jaliba for me could be someone that we want to play in his channel, which is the first channel, because you've got very, very interesting centers from the French. So with him being there, it tells you we're going to play a quick ball, we're going to play someone who's going to be in front of Dupont and who's got the French understanding because he plays here for Montpellier. So that thing is some of the things that went for him in this team, but also not that Faf has been having a great World Cup. So for me is going out of, you know, out of the box, thinking out of the box rather, and uh, Jack Ninaba and Rassi have now said, we want to go with a different type of halfback pairing. We experience in the midfield, Jesse Dialinde. We've got a good back three that can play against any country in the world with Willemse, Colby and Kedley Aronson. But here's the thinking. If you give these two the opportunity, they might set the stage alight. And that's what we want to expect from them. Because they've been given the platform with big forwards up front. Right, right. Experienced forwards. So there's no excuse for them to say they've been going back. But one thing I need to say, our scrums haven't been doing well. Yeah. I'm a bit worried. So if you look at the starting uh, sort of a team, those are guys that have played together for the longest time ever. So I think we went there looking to make sure that we nullify our position as a good scrummager. But also I think our lineouts, we're coming up against a side that's line out well. French have been phenomenal in their lineouts. In fact, most of their tries are off the back of the lineout. 
So they will use walkies. And, and for me, that's important, is set phase, scrums, line out, drop. Now you've got a, a guy like Kobas Reinhardt. You give him a good platform from the base of the scrum. It's out to money, taking it flat. Now you, from the, from the line out, if you watch yesterday's game, it was always off the top. Yeah. It was always off the top, whether it's Whitelock, whether it's yeah. Brody Rotelli, whether it's Scott Barrett, it was always off the top and quick ball. So I think that's the type of game plan that wins you games. All Blacks did it, yeah. led to Richie Mawanga breaking the line, Jordan to score in the corner. It yeah. all came from the top of the ball into the hands of Stramov. So it's all about quick balls. Take off the blinkers here because now I don't want to see a person like Pernod going to score tries because he's been doing it so well in this tournament, you know, top try scorer and everything. When you start to score tries as often as he's done, seven consecutive run that he's on right now. Who then and how then do you plot against stopping that machinery from carrying on? The good thing about Jack Nina, but he's a defense coach. Yeah. So he would have put on his head in terms of him defending against this French side. So what it means, if you kick, you've got to chase. Yeah. So South Africa have kicked, but have not done enough chasing when they've kicked there. If you look at the All Blacks, they kicked over, but they had a good chase line. Yeah. And that put the Irish in, under a lot of pressure. So this time around, if South Africa decides to kick, we've got to have the straight line of chasing and have faith in our back, a full back, that back two that will be there waiting for the Frenchmen yeah. to kick back at us. If you look at them, Peno, the strong runner, he's yeah. got everything, he's got the height, he's big. But also, we've proven with our small wings, yeah. a Kettley Aronson, yeah. you've looked at the Cheslin, we can yeah. take them down. Yeah. It's not about the size for us, it's about the heart. But also, we've got, a, the agility is better than Peno. Yeah. So, Peno at right wing, face is facing. Kettley Aronson, quick feet, can pop up anywhere, can be a distraction. Damien Willem said, fullback for me, if he gathers, you don't know what he's going to do with his stepping. He's now become the hot stepper of the team. Yeah. So that's what I like about it. But also, if you look at Gail Foucault, Jesse Krill has got to close him down. And that's what I'm talking about. Rush defense all the time, but make your tackles. Irish were poor in tackling, yeah. cost them the game. So we've got to say we're chasing on defense, but we've got to make the tackles. On the breakdown, it becomes an issue. Do we go for breakdown, concede penalties? Mm -hmm. We're going to be punished. What do we do? Do we rather stop them there and fan out and defend and make sure we've got numbers both on, on the blind and also on the open? That for me is important. All right, as you said, that Antoine Dupont, uh, a man who 24 days ago fractured his cheek, was allowed to play, is allowed to play today. And that is a big decider again. Whether or not that's a good decision is left up to the opposition, which is South Africa, to see how they handle uh, that situation. But he has been cleared 100%, but such an integral part, and as a leader uh, for the French, to bring the result that they so desire as well. Tables might have turned. South Africa on three occasions, world champions. On the flip side, France on three occasions, runners up. So things are a little bit topsy-turvy in terms of the end result and the dominance as far as world rugby is concerned. But Tando Manana to give us his final shot, his final thought, and dare I say, his prediction. Rob, I'll say one thing. The bookies give it to the French team by two points. Right. That's what they're doing. Obviously, they're at home. Yeah. They're, playing, they, they, they're playing their 19th game undefeated in 18 of the previous games. So everything seems to tilt towards them. Now I'm saying as a South African, and I put my, my Rasi hat on, if we go out there and we play for the country, all right? He's, he's, he's taught us how they went about 2019, is it's not about you. Yeah. It's about the team, it's about the badge. So if we go there and we execute, we've got talent, we've got enough talented players going today in the match day 23. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Take our opportunities when they present themselves. Defend like Trojans, all right, in order for you to win it. Yeah. Nice thing about Andy Farrell, he said defense wins your games. He couldn't defend. So he takes it that he lost. So for me, that's important. Also, Rob, lastly, for South Africa to win, they've got to play and stick to the game plan. We'll find out what the game plan is, who they target. I don't think they'll target a DuPont. I think DuPont himself will always be wary in going to anyone yeah. of the cheek. It plays in the mind. Yeah. So we've got to worry about the other players and not about DuPont. 
Rugby is about a 15-man sport, not about an individual. He's class. He's got everything. But we've got class too. If I name you Damien Dialinda, he's played 75 tests. He's won a World Cup. The Frenchmen have not won the World Cup. Yeah. They don't know what it feels to taste, oh. to taste and yeah. to hold it in yeah. a change room and sing a la bleu. <laughs> As I said, four times rugby championship winners, three times world champions. Uh, that is the story of uh, South Africa. The dominance on the global stage is something that they'll be carrying on uh, to the start of France. What a moment in time for South Africa. You talked about wearing the Rassi hat. I think it's time to take your Tanda Manana hat off, sir. Are you ready for our sports worldwide?